Hey everyone, my name is Carrie, and in today's episode of What AIO Loves About the Ocean, I'm going to be talking about plankton. No, I'm not talking about the kind that lives in the chum bucket on SpongeBob SquarePants. I'm talking about the organisms which make up the basis of the ocean food chain. Some of you might be skeptical that this would be my favorite part about the ocean, but I'm going to convince you that it's also your favorite part of the ocean as well. Take these two pictures of the ocean. The one on the left is from the tropics, and the one on the right is from Maine. Which do you think has more plankton? Hopefully you've made up your mind because I'm about to spoil it for you. The picture on the right has the most plankton. But what does the amount of plankton in the water actually mean? Well, think of plankton-rich water from Maine like a rainforest. There are plenty of nutrients in the water to feed the plankton, and therefore support many types of other animals which feed on the plankton. Meanwhile, the tropical water without plankton has very little in terms of nutrients and is much closer to a desert. You clever folks out there might be wondering about coral reefs, but I guess you'll just have to come to camp to learn about that mystery. So what is plankton? Plankton is actually made up of a bunch of different types of creatures and is defined as organisms that are not able to swim against a current. Plankton, or planktonic species, really just refers to a lifestyle among individuals living in the ocean. If they can't swim against a current and instead just float along with it, then they're considered plankton. Pop quiz! Is this animal considered plankton? Of course it is! Why would I include it in a plankton video otherwise? I imagine most of you are picturing animals too small to see with the naked eye. However, plankton can also be big animals such as this jelly or even the mola mola, which is one of the heaviest bony fishes in the world. Mola molas can even be found in the coastal waters of New England as they get swept along with the Gulf Stream. Some animals that make up plankton are called holoplankton, which means that they spend their entire lives as plankton. This could be microscopic organisms like protists, which are the most common type of holoplankton, or bigger species such as jellies. Both of these species, along with many other types, float along with the currents for their entire lives. However, other types of plankton are only plankton for part of their life cycle. These individuals are called meroplankton, and they will usually only be planktonic or plankton-like during their larval or baby stages of life. For many fish and shellfish species, their eggs hatch into microscopic larvae which float around as part of the plankton for the beginning of their lives until they begin to grow. During breeding seasons, meroplankton make up the majority of plankton in the area. It is thought that about 80% of bottom-dwelling animals spend the beginning of their lives as plankton. Beginning life as plankton is an advantage to many species as it is used as a way to spread out in the ocean to make sure that more babies survive without trying to share food and space. Plankton is so abundant and diverse because it is an important lifestyle for many types of animals. Alright, now that you know what plankton is, let's get into why plankton is my favorite thing about the ocean. First of all, plankton is the lowest level of every food chain in the ocean. Without plankton, we would not be able to enjoy all of the amazing animals that make the ocean so cool. Everything from lobsters to dolphins, sea cucumbers to sharks rely on plankton in order to survive. Name your favorite marine animal and I guarantee that it relies on plankton. Not only are plankton the basis of the ocean food chain, they also directly support many large animals. Many different species come to the waters of Maine during the summer to feast on the plankton in the water. Whales such as humpback, minke, and fin can be seen feeding on the plankton on whale watches. These massive animals directly eat the plankton using baleen or comb-like plates in their mouth. They will take a massive gulp of water and then use their baleen to filter out any plankton in the water. Other large animals that eat plankton are basking sharks and even the whale shark, which is the largest fish in the sea. Both of these species swim around with their mouths open, eating plankton out of the water. Whale sharks are one of the only filter feeding animals to act as a vacuum and actually suck in the water rather than just swimming through it. This allows them to eat a lot more plankton than other animals. As a direct food source and also as part of the bigger food chain, plankton is essential for all life in the ocean. Plankton is also incredibly important for life on land. Phytoplankton, or plant-like plankton, are responsible for creating 70% of the oxygen that we breathe. In comparison, the Amazon rainforest produces 20% of the oxygen in the atmosphere. This means that in order to match the amount of oxygen coming from phytoplankton, we would need three and a half Amazon rainforests. But phytoplankton isn't just important for today's atmosphere. They are also responsible for creating oxygen in the prehistoric atmosphere before we had land-based plants. So essentially, phytoplankton is the reason that oxygen-breathing animals are able to survive on the Earth. Without phytoplankton in the oceans, life would not have existed as we know it today. The final reason why I love plankton is because some types of plankton are bioluminescent, meaning that they're able to create light. When disturbed by a wave or an animal moving through the water, the plankton will release a flash of light. The plankton use this bioluminescence to confuse predators, but it also looks incredibly beautiful. 
Hopefully you now understand why plankton is one of my favorite parts of the ocean. A unique lifestyle used by many types of animals, plankton is essential for both life in the oceans and on land. Although they're not able to even control where they swim, they have a massive impact on the rest of the world and are really proof that many individuals working together can make a huge difference. I hope you enjoyed this segment of What AIO Loves About the Ocean. If you would like more information on AIO, visit the website at acadiainstitute.com and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next video. Thanks!